Welcome to a very special episode of Central Line. I say that before every episode, but like for real, this is special. Look at her coat. Like, if, hello. <laughs> this is Lila Proenza, hello. Um, Dr. Lila Proenza, and she is um, an amazing, wonderful, warm, beautiful person. Also very smart, very brilliant. Um, and I met her after I essentially uh, socially stalked her at the AVMA convention um, in July. And now here she is. I'm glad so. you did. <laughs> um, we're here on site at the very first AhaCon, so AhaCon 2023 here in San Diego, which is very close to where you live. Yes, very close. And um, it's a beautiful day outside, and yet you have taken some of your time to be inside talking to me, and I really yes. appreciate that. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I really like it. Lila, See, we... that was totally persona. That was, yes. Right? <laughs> so we're going to talk about that in a second, because I, I, I asked permission, but I really want to talk about that. So, But Lila, would you just introduce yourself to anyone who has not seen you in your fabulous coat. Yes. Who are you and um, what are you passionate about? Yes. Um, I'm Lila Proenza. Should I look at the camera? Or at you? Doesn't matter. Yeah? Yeah, me. Well, me. I'm Lila Proenza. I am the founder of VetaHead. Um, VetaHead is one of my passions. It, it is a business, but I actually see that as a movement, um, a movement for change. Uh, so we have no species left behind. So basically we teach... Uh, veterinary professionals, technicians, you know, veterinary students about um, ZooMed, which is exotic animal medicine. Um, it's a huge gap. We don't, learn, we don't learn that at school. And there's so many owners that have them as pets and mm -hmm. love them deeply. And as veterinarians, we are passionate about it. You know, about 40% of us really, really love it, but we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I just, in like going to conferences and speaking about it and having people come after and talk to me and, and I noticed like a recurrent comment which was, oh my God, I was about to give up. And it was, I was so inspired from what you said and, and it, that was so recurrent. And I was like, okay, how can I, and this was pre-COVID, I was like, how can I, how can I help all everybody? Because I can't be everywhere, right? And the message is so simple. The message is like no species left behind and we don't practice exotic animal medicine because exotic animal medicine is, can we curse? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's up to Kate. Maybe we put a beep. I won't curse, I won't curse. I'll make it easy for you. Uh, my persona <laughs> doesn't curse. Actually, my persona does. Time. My persona does way. curse. I, I've been told, um, but <laughs> it's just, you know, exotic animal medicine is, is based on fear. It's, based, it's really made for people to fear what they're doing, fear mistakes. They're like, I can't believe you did that. It's very judgmental mm -hmm. and, you know, zoo mad patients are more alike than they are different and they are not difficult. Mm -hmm. It's just the same medicine. There's just a few details that we need to follow and I really wanted people to know that so to encourage them and to teach them. And then at the time, I was like, it has to be online, right? Mm -hmm. But I was like, how am I going to convince people you can learn medicine online? <laughs> and then COVID came. <laughs> Ta -da! Ta -da! So today is no longer a hurdle. <laughs> but now they're like, you're going to yes. make me get on a plane. I know. And now it's like, you know, I do. I, we say we are not webinars. We are vet ahead because yeah. it's definitely not a webinar. Um, but yeah, that's how it came in. Like everything about me is different the way we teach. Mm -hmm. It has, is really thought through and is so much loving to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's one of my big passions. And I also love to speak about leadership and feminism and equality and gender equality is very big on me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's always impossible like to separate those things yeah. and, and, um, also race equality. Um, you know, some of the life choices I made, I got really confronted with all of that. And I was like, okay, let's, let's put that to under the, I'm passionate about, and it's definitely, you know, another goal, another thing to fight for. So yeah, I think that sums up. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> also a mom yeah, so. and uh, yeah, and, you know, Brazilian, um, yeah, all of that. So immigrant and all of that. So 
And I heard you tell your story, a, a mm -hmm. personal version of your story mm -hmm. on the stage at AVMA mm -hmm. um, at your lecture. And it really resonated, not just with me, but I looked around. This was not a lecture on zoo medicine. No. It <laughs> this, was. <laughs> this was a lecture on basically what it's like to be a woman who yeah. speaks her mind and says no sometimes mm -hmm. and um, has opinions mm -hmm. and isn't afraid to, t to express them, mm -hmm. and it, it, a.k.a a difficult yes. woman, um, and I certainly can identify with mm -hmm. that, um, more so the mm -hmm. older I get. But you telling that story, I mean, I looked around this room, it was a full room. Mm -hmm. I, there, I think there was one dude, like, yes. you go, dude. Yeah. You know, so at least people who identified as women and who could yeah. really relate, because I looked around and there were tears in everyone's eyes a few times during your, your talk, um, and I think people just saw themselves. and. That was so powerful to mm -hmm. me. And like, I am terrified of exotic animal medicine. Mm -hmm. Terrified. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely. As is everybody, as yeah. I was too. I don't want to touch a bird. Yeah. Like, I don't even yep. want to be in the same room as a bird because yeah. I'm worried I'm going to kill it just yep. by looking at it See? funny. Yeah. Um, and I, if I had had vet mm -hmm. ahead when I was in general practice, mm -hmm. I would have absolutely used it. Yeah. Um, and I love how passionate you are about yeah. it. But it was the personal story and that connection that really made me just say immediately mm -hmm. kind of creepily yeah i love this woman creepily. she's my person <laughs> yeah it was a little creepy i was like we're gonna be friends like she doesn't have a choice about this like i'm gonna go up and i'm just gonna wait to uh, talk to her <laughs> no that lecture was um you know this is a lecture i gave probably three times only i think that was the third time mm -hmm. and it's a lecture every time i tailor it a little bit um because i put stories in and i take them out i'm like okay maybe this is too personal i shouldn't say that um and then i go like screw it you know mm -hmm. i have to say it and it, it that specific one it brought tears to my eyes because as I was speaking, I could see people nodding and like becoming emotional. And I was like, uh, F, I'm not alone, mm -hmm. you know? And it is very alone. It's a lonely journey. Mm -hmm. It's very lonely. I don't want people, I don't want to glamorize being difficult because yeah. it sucks. Yeah. It's really isolating. I cannot have romantic relationships because. I just don't tolerate BS. And I think it's just like basic standards, you know? You just want someone that their words match their actions. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty basic. Someone that is reliable, pretty basic. Respectful, pretty basic, yeah. you know? Intelligent, yeah. um, self-sufficient. I don't want to raise anyone. <laughs> like, You're really just I'm ticking like pretty, off the boxes here, though. Pretty though. big. <laughs> That's a lot of boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be hot too? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that, that's and and then underneath it all, they have to under not just be all those things, but appreciate, understand that you are the way you are, yeah. And that is something to love about you, not something to tolerate about you. It no, it tends to compete, and I don't know how to make that equation work. You know, it tends to become a competition. I swear to God, I'm not trying to compete with them. I don't even care. I just want them to have their friends and their life. It's just, I cannot, I cannot hear the word emasculated. I can't, seriously, it's like trigger. I can't, like, I'm not responsible for your testosterone levels. Like, there are shots for that. But, uh, <laughs> is this what it's supposed to go? But I think, <laughs> I mean, poor my son. I have a son, so yeah. I raise him to not do these things, you know? Yeah. I really think that I'm trying to raise, you know, the man I wish that was out there. Yeah. And I even broke up. Like, I really ended my marriage because of them mm -hmm. because I was scared because my kids don't handle change a lot really well because of this story and, and you know, abandonment and all of that. So... I was scared to break up with my ex-husband because I, I really thought that I, they're going to, like, freak out or, you know, it wasn't fair to them. Um, but then I realized that I had to do it for them because I could not give them the example to that a woman needs to shrink to stay with someone or to conform to being married and having a house and the hills, you know. And 
it was the best decision ever. Even my son, like a month later, he was like, mom, you're so happy. You know, and they both get it and they both tell me, you know, mom, we, like I made a, again, and I shared in that lecture, I'm, I made a mistake again and I have no idea how I did it. You know, I was in a relationship with a narcissist and I have never had a relationship with a narcissist. And I don't know, I'm, I consider myself super smart and you know, like how come I didn't see all these red flags? But you know, at the end they're like, mom, and I was talking to them, you know, I, I'm thinking about I'm gonna break up and we're really like a family and et cetera. And they're like, mom, we just want you happy if he's not, doing, he's not being good to you. And then I said something like, okay, I'll never date again, guys. Don't worry, I'm never going to bring another guy to our house. And my son was like, why are you going to make this mistake? My son is 15. And he was like, mom, you're so young, you know. You were so, you were a great person, you know. You deserve love. And I was like, oh, my God, how old are you, dude? Doing something right there. And then he said, you're my Spider-Man. I know, that was like really, Ugh. I know, that was the best compliment ever. Mom, you my Spider-Man. I was like, oh my God, okay. Okay, I'll keep doing this. You will not break my soul. So, says Queen Bee. <laughs> um, and I think Veta Head is a lot of that because yeah. Veta Head goes really against everything, mm. against everything that has been taught. You know, we're really trying to change the dynamic, a culture. Mm -hmm. Goes ev against everything. You know, people think that, um, the Zoomed pets, the owners won't pay for appointments, which it couldn't be further from the truth. They think they won't take them to the vet, which again, it couldn't be, f it's like such an untouched territory waiting there, you know, mm -hmm. for the market to realize that. And they think that you're gonna be poor if you do Zoomed, you know, yeah. I am not poor. Right. And, you know, that's another problem. I make, usually make more money than my partner and that's a he really huge problem. I have not met a man yet that is okay with that. Mm -hmm. I really haven't. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they say, <laughs> I love strong women. I do you really? <laughs> you like the idea of it because it's shiny. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not easy. And is uh, it really not easy? It's not to easy. To be with a strong woman? No, I mean, it's not easy to navigate relationships as a strong woman. Oh, no, it's not. I think it oh, can no. be very easy. It just depends, you know. I. Relationships are complicated no matter who you are. Yeah. Um, they're complicated, they're complex, and a lot of people settle. And right. if you're a person who doesn't like to settle or you're in a phase of life where you're like, okay, anything less than a hell yeah is settling. You see, but I don't know. I don't mind settling. I just don't want to shrink. Yeah. You know, settle is fine. I just don't want to shrink. Yeah. You know, some normal, like some routine is okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But like having to literally is the image of little you know the cat in the the bottle mm -hmm. like it's like literally doing that you know i'm not that flexible <laughs> <laughs> i'm really not <laughs> well, and you know like I, i've i just dated someone um, i was engaged to someone lovely and he absolutely did not want me to shrink mm -hmm. i really believe that mm -hmm. He's the most supportive person, mm -hmm. but I was shrinking myself mm -hmm. because we were in different spots mm -hmm. in life. Right. Yeah. And I was doing it to myself because I mm -hmm. felt like being around him, I, I couldn't be the only one mm -hmm. who was big mm -hmm. and, um, or wanted to mm -hmm. feel big and be big and do big. And, and that's where I am right now. Yeah. Just do all the things and feel all the things. Mm -hmm. like, and, um, that was a really hard choice, you know, because this is a profession, veterinary medicine in mm -hmm. general is a profession that attracts people who are used to kind of having to fit into mm -hmm. boxes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had to fit into certain boxes to get into school in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. And then we had to fit into boxes to get out of school. Mm -hmm. And then we had to fit into boxes to get jobs and keep those jobs. And like, we're suffering the consequences of that now as a profession where yeah. everybody feels like there's one way to be a vet and if you're not good at it, it's your fault. And like people are burning out and, um, and taking too long, I think, to figure out that there are other ways to do it. Yep. And yeah, no. And even like, again, the, the whole concept of it, I had the whole way we teach and the whole approach we have is completely against the flow. And very often, you know, people come, it just happened last week, you know, um, I shouldn't say very often. It's not, we don't have many, many people coming and 
quote unquote being haters. Mm -hmm. Our community is very healthy. Um, they're, they're the Veta headers, mm -hmm. which is super cool. I love this name. Mm -hmm. But here and there will come a person, you know, um, there should be a person mentoring others. There should be a person, a, a, a person with name, a person with, you know, a platform. And they come and they will make a nasty comment like, very like, oh, this is so wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. And I'm like, not here, you know? And, and that's the part that's been difficult. Like my answer on Instagram is like, dude is usually a dude. It's like, you have my phone number. Don't pretend you don't know me. Don't come here in my house say those things, this is not professional, and I will delete this if this continue. And I say, if you don't have my phone number anymore, DM me and I'll give you, because this is like, what are you doing, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm just like, and then I'll, I'm behind it, it come a lot, comes a lot of people today that is speaking up. So it's really cool, that part. Yes, you the know? third party army, Dave Yes, calls it. I have never had this experience before, but like, I can't just pretend this didn't happen. It yeah. did happen, you know. Yeah. Of course, the dude never texted me or called me. But I literally say that, and I put it there. This is not okay. You're not going to talk to me like this, mm -hmm. you know. I put my boundaries right there. Yep. And if this continues, I will delete it. And I cannot, and there's always someone with a big name, and mm -hmm. I don't care. You know, you should be using this for good. Yes. Yeah. It's like, um, I like it, okay, you don't agree with me, so what? So... <laughs> so you had said, you know, I, that's one of the things that I love about you mm -hmm. is that you're just like, Psh, not in my house. Yeah. And when, before we started recording, you talked about your village mm -hmm. and how, like, even though you're not a person who trusts easily, mm -hmm. um, trust in and believing mm -hmm. the best intentions of mm -hmm. people is what has led you to have a village, as yeah. you call it, that really supports you, lifts you up, takes mm -hmm. care of you when you need that. Um, and it sounds like the Vetahead community is is yes. part of that village. It is really, and that's a, that's amazing. That's it amazing. is amazing. I'm very proud of it, and I'm very proud of the people I did decide to trust. You know, I am more again. Trust is very difficult for me, as I think it might be for a lot of people. But I I look like this out like outgoing person, which I am. You know, but I. I let you be friends with my persona. Mm. That's very easy. But like be friends with Lila, you know, that's very hard. Like I, you need to come with a little, uh, you know, hammer to break some bricks <laughs> to come in. Uh, and I keep putting them back as you break them. I'm really good about it. Um, I'm really broken inside as in like, I, you know, I am very strong. But at the same time, I'm very sensitive and I really hurt when something happens to me. Not this type of comment on Instagram, that doesn't mm -hmm. faze me. But like if I let you in and something happened mm -hmm. or if it's completely gratuitous and you're like, why? Why are you doing this to me? I'm just existing, like I didn't do anything to you. And um, so much of it, like you, you, or like even at my residency, which I quit, I'm so proud of it, um, you know, like you're supposed to be my mentor. Why are you breaking my soul? Mm -hmm. Like it's really deep. It deeply hurts me, and it it takes time to grieve about it. You yes. know, and yeah. So inside, even though I look like this really strong person that keeps conquering, and I am. Inside is you know, leaves a human that is very sensitive. Yeah, and it's it's hard sometimes to navigate. Because sometimes you just want to crawl in your shell and just stay and just be regular. Like, I can't. You know, one time I went to a therapist and he was like, okay, what is your goal? I said, I want to be sweet. He said, what? <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I did not expect you to say that. <laughs> I, I swear to God. He was like, what? I said, I just want to be sweet. He was like, what do you mean? I said, you know those people that everybody's like, oh, such and such, so sweet. Yeah, I'm not like that. You know? <laughs> I don't want to be that person. That, that person might be like at therapy being like, God, I want to be strong. I know, I just want to be sweet. I want to be the kind of person who draws boundaries and says, not in my house. Like, the grass is always greener, right? <laughs> no, but, you know, I do that today because I have some stability that allows me to. No, I guess I was bold like this 
without knowing since I was a little kid, not knowing what was I, was I doing, you know. I was, uh, you know, I was um, allowing myself to act like, you know, a white man mm -hmm. without knowing that I was doing and I could not understand why it generated so much conflict. I was just like, I'm You're just like, doing what the guy did. It, like, <laughs> <laughs> it took me a long time to understand. And even, you know, for a long time, I was like, oh, this feminist, what is wrong with them? And I, and it's just like, you know, today I was like, oh, okay. It's a process. It's a process to yeah. figure out your place in the world. But at the end of the day, I'm very proud of who I am. Mm -hmm. That's actually my new tattoo on my arm. Oh. It says, um, in English, it's in Portuguese, but in English is something so, um, to the effect of, um, continue to be passionate about the woman you fought so hard to be, mm -hmm. you know, like follow, follow this path, and and says love grandma, which is my like I love her so much, but she was a trailblazer, trailblazer. How do you say that? Trailblazer. Trailblazer. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's a very lonely journey. Yeah. Like if anyone goes to the therapist to say I want to be a trailblazer, know that you're going to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. I don't, I mean, I understand, like, I can't invalidate your feelings like you, mm -hmm. I, I understand it feels alone, and also, like, you're so not alone. Right, but it took a while for me to find my village, that's yeah. what I'm, I'm trying to say, like, yeah, today yeah. I don't feel, well, there is still, I'm not gonna lie, I'm saying too much to you, damn it, Katie. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love, this is why, this is why I love you, because I still cry at night so many yeah. nights yeah it's so overwhelming you know you talked about your persona mm -hmm. um here a few times and uh i don't know if anyone here has read books by glennon doyle but um yeah i know you have yeah we bonded over yeah. untamed I yeah know. um but her book before that love warrior mm -hmm. she talked about um where she was talking about trying to save her marriage mm -hmm. um and she talked about her representative mm -hmm. and she would like send her representative into mm -hmm. situations she'd mm -hmm. be like okay you know um my representative is going mm -hmm. to marriage therapy like mm -hmm. my representative <laughs> is going to pick up the kids from school and like it never really felt she felt like she had to sort of put this person forward mm -hmm. that was glennon mm -hmm. that everybody yeah. saw and i yeah. think a lot of women especially can relate to that mm -hmm. of like okay if i i just got this email from this guy and it was like pretty rude mm -hmm. but if i want to email back even if i'm saying no it has to be nice you know like mm -hmm. i that's my per, that's my representative mm -hmm. writing that email mm -hmm. because i want to be really rude mm -hmm. back you mm -hmm. know <laughs> um and like when you came in you were like oh I, I you know i've got to put my persona on you know to be doctor and not just lila and like i i just wonder if you could just say a little bit more about yes. that it's funny see. so i'm doing dbt uh therapy is dialectal behavioral therapy. I don't know if you ever heard about it. Yeah. But it's full of acronyms. Mm. You know, yeah. whatever stop in the and so it, so you it's like how you modulate your behaviors, how you can um, it's not for you not to feel, but for you to be able to manage your your feelings, your emotions and etc. So it's funny because the whole thing is for you not to escalate. The whole DBT program is for you to learn ways and tools for you not to escalate and find, a, you know, you're not going to be able to not feel it, right. but don't escalate, et cetera. And I've been doing it for a few months already, and I keep telling my therapist, but I want to engage. <laughs> and I came up with like an acronym from engage that will be positive every letter and so every time now I tell them but I want to engage and now I can because this is all positive <laughs> they may right I want to engage I <laughs> like fine here's how you can engage <laughs> uh, just put a smiley face at the end yeah. like, uh, <laughs> I love the passive aggressive American Emojis way. Emojis definitely have helped a lot when it comes I know. to that. Don't you just hate it when someone says, oh, I'm so sorry, I wish I could help you. Nope, you didn't. You're like, you know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just say you don't want to help, yeah. and I'm fine with that. You per know? my last email. <laughs> per our conversation. No, I'm kidding. But um, the persona. So I think my persona, it's not someone different from who I am. I'm very... I'm very raw, which also, it's amazing, but it also comes with these consequences. Mm -hmm. My persona just hides 
my weak spots. Mm -hmm. You know, my person my persona just wears a very thick shield mm -hmm. um, to not allow anyone in, right? So um, it's not that my persona won't get into a conflict. It's just that I won't let you see my weak spots, mm -hmm. right? When you're driving, like the side, what is it called? When you can see on the mirror? Side view mirror? No, like oh. when you're driving and there's a oh, blind spot. Vision. A blind spot. Oh. A blind spot. Yeah. Yeah, I won't like. <laughs> I, I have a blind spot right here. Like I can't, I actually can't see it. It's really bizarre. I'm holding my, for the people listening, I'm, well, Lila laughs at me. <laughs> I'm holding my hand because she's like, I know, I know what peripheral vision is. <laughs> I'm holding my, my hand. No, it's just because, like, <laughs> see, we just shared stuff that we shouldn't be sharing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just won't let, because if I don't let you in, yeah. you can't hurt me, yeah. right? Yeah, it's yeah. really sad, though. It's, it's really sad. I'm very aware of it. Well, and I think there are a lot of people who go through practice life mm -hmm. that way, you mm -hmm. know, like they, they compartmentalize mm -hmm. until it's like they mm -hmm. compartmentalize themselves into complete detachment yeah. or disengagement yeah. because we feel so much I want to all engage. day. Yeah. Yes. Whether we're angry or yeah. defensive or like a client is giving us a hard time mm -hmm. about something and we need mm -hmm. to react, we need mm -hmm. to respond rather than reacting mm -hmm. or we're upset mm -hmm. because of a convenience euthanasia yeah. or because of you know whatever and moral distress mm -hmm. and we just put all that we just hide all that behind the persona you know you see no so it's interesting to say and I didn't mean to cut you but yeah. I feel like my person I still won't do all of those things mm -hmm. and I get in trouble a lot I just got recently I have never had um an ethical like when they go to boards and complain about you I forget mm -hmm. the name it receives Anyway, I never had a complaint before with boards, and I had two recently. And one was, again, because I don't do those things. Like, if an owner wants to euthanize their pet and there is a treatment for it, um, I'm not talking about end-stage cancer that you could right. extend the life for two months. I'm talking about, like, like a broken, broken leg. leg. Yeah, or, or something like that. They go, I don't have money. Like, okay. Okay, so you need to euthanize. I said, no, I'm not going to. What? You don't love animals? I said, no, I do. You don't. Like I, I say what, you know, sometimes I say like that because they are putting me on the spot. Why can't I put them on the spot? It's like, it's almost like they are putting the onus and the responsibility of having that pet on me. Mm -hmm. And we take it, mm -hmm. we take it as vets. I don't do euthanasias that I don't, oh, but the, you know, like it can be a whole podcast on that, but like, oh, but the name is gonna suffer. They're like, yes, but it's not on me, right? That's not, so I, I become very, it's the unlikability dilemma, no matter where mm -hmm. I turn, I cannot be that person, but my persona is just less open. I still very vulnerable. I still share without letting you in. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I likely let you in because then we had a personal connection through another friend. I was like, okay, this might be safe. And then we start talking and I was like, fine. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yes, my point is, it is, an, and it literally is an, unlikability dilemma for yeah. me. Yeah, it's yeah. like the whole lecture, the whole uh, talk, it is literally that. It's like how I need to learn to get comfort being unliked by people mm -hmm. if I want to be, if I want to like myself. But it doesn't come without cost. That's what I don't want. I don't want to reproduce this idea of the superhero woman or that, you know, every choice comes with consequences. It's just what you're willing to, you know. It's perfectly fine if the person chooses not to get into conflict. Yeah. If for them it's easier that way. For me it's easier the other way, right? Yeah. And, and it's okay. It's okay. I just want us to have the ability to choose which side. This AHA podcast is brought to you by Care Credit. Care Credit understands that all veterinary teams are busier than ever. To help patients get the care they need, the Care Credit Health and Pet Care Credit Card allows clients to access a budget-friendly financing experience anytime from anywhere on their own smart device. They can learn, see if they pre-qualify, apply, and even pay if approved, all on that smart device. With just a tap, they have a friendly, contactless way to pay over time for the services and treatments their pet needs, whether it be a general, referring, or specialty hospital as long as they accept the care credit credit card. You say it doesn't come without cost and that's true. Mm -hmm. um, but also 
there will be people who want to be, you know, this is a very atypical central line podcast. <laughs> I'm actually going to take this because I'm getting hot. But there I mean, are, we're talking about there, so many things. There, and I'm laughing so much. <laughs> okay. There will be people that, that see that and that's exactly why they want to. Yeah to get to know you and they will yeah. be your true yep. village. And that I think is just a gift mm -hmm. because people who are sweet <laughs> and this is no shade to sweet people. I, I want to be sweet. Who, people. Right. You want to be sweet. But people <laughs> I was paying a professional to make me sweet. People <laughs> whose persona is sweet and they also are sweet, mm -hmm. you know, who don't want to make waves and who don't mm -hmm. want to say no and who don't want to draw those boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um, there's nothing wrong, like, the, the world is full of different kinds of people, but sometimes it can be very hard to know who is your real friend mm -hmm. when you are able to be mm -hmm. sweet to everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, being difficult, mm -hmm. the quotes again, mm -hmm. um, means that the people who are like, dude, yes, mm -hmm. like, you just yeah. said it, you know? And uh, sometimes it surprises you. Before we sat down, I was talking mm -hmm. about somebody that I just talked to who really surprised me mm -hmm. that he saw that about mm -hmm. me and said, that's exactly why we need you. Mm -hmm. And I, that's not something you hear all the time. And no. I, but it, it makes me feel more valued mm -hmm. than if someone was like, but you're so sweet. We'd love to have you join us. Because, of course, who wouldn't want a sweet person to join them? Yeah. But that's not necessarily the same gift as it is for somebody to be like, yeah, you say no, mm -hmm. you draw boundaries, you stand up for yourself. Sometimes you're unpleasant. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid to piss people off. Mm -hmm. And I want more of that. Yeah. And not for show, but because there's yes. value to it and because you, they feel like you're a truth teller. and they want That's that. definitely what I'm attracting is just growing up as a veterinarian, right? you are really afraid to be true, true to yourself because you will lose opportunities. Mm -hmm. You will lose. Yeah. Don't, yeah, students you don't will. come to this like thinking I'm just going to be true to myself and I'm not, yes, you will. And probably we are changing the scenario for the ones after us because probably that's going to become more common than not. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's not going to be a problem. That's my hope. But as I was becoming a veterinarian, I had to tolerate a lot to not miss out on opportunities, including a residency in mm -hmm. ZooMed, which is extremely hard to get in, like extremely, pathetically hard. I don't know why, but it's made that way. Um, so I just, but I, as I was able to stand up on my two feet and have financial freedom and things like that, that's when I found, felt empowered to start really being truth to myself and actually creating my opportunities because the job I wanted did not exist. Mm -hmm. So I worked for a lot of people, great people, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just at the end of the day, that's not, like we were talking about this earlier, like, you know, being really passionate about what you do, like believing that you're changing something. You don't need to change the world and world peace. That's not what I'm saying, but it could be something small, you know? Um, but you truly believe in what you're doing and you have a vision on how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. That just did not exist. Yeah. And I had to create it. And time to time, I actually have a talk that is CV does not get you a job. Mm. Because all the jobs I had, I did not have to give my CV. And that all the times I had to give my CV, not that my CV is not good, it's excellent, but I didn't get the, the job. Because those are standard quote, like the standard, right. you know. That's not who you are. No, it's not who I am. So my, all my positions, they were created for me. And I was reflecting about this the other day, you know. When I quit my residency that night, you know, I didn't tell anyone bes besides the people at UGA, you know, I'm quitting. And I was very vocal. I'm quitting because of this mentor because he's toxic. Um, I was literally drugging myself to be there. Like three, like two antidepressants, an alpha two, just to go to work. Yeah. Drug did not, it was like my talks with my psychiatrist were ridiculous. Now I th like, okay, I need you to drug me enough for me to be able to tolerate it, but not too much because I need to practice medicine. Like how, how sad is that? And then I finally decided to, you know, break ties. And that night I received a phone call and he literally that night offered me, offered me a position that did not exist. He's like, I have this vision. I want to have Zoom at VCA. We don't have anything, and I want you to be the director. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I want you to do it. 
I know you're the person to do it. And I, I was like conflicting at the time. I was like, do I tell him that I just quit my residency? Because who's going to want someone that quit a residency? Yeah. And, and he's very big on education. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just, full disclosure, I, I just quit my residency. And there was a minute of silence. And he was like, good, so you can start early. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so you see, when you close doors, definitely you attract people that will. And I'm very grateful. We're still good friends. I left VCA because I wanted to start Vet Ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm still really, I still love the company. I still work with them. I love their like values and all. But yeah, you definitely surround yourself. But it's when you feel financial, uh, financial independence. I don't think... I would advise people to just do that reckless. You know, hopefully it will become the norm. Yeah. But it's not yet. Yeah. So it is changing, though. The new yeah. generation is definitely more vocal about they are. work hours and things like that, which I really, really like. Yep. And about what they will and won't tolerate yeah. in terms of how they're treated personally. Yes. Um, personally yes. and professionally doesn't have the same line mm -hmm. between them as mm -hmm. it used to. Mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate that. Um, the reason I wanted to have you come on was not to talk about zoo mm -hmm. med, you know, mm -hmm. exotic animal med, although everybody should check out Vet Ahead and just like, it's pretty great. And um, I wish, again, I wish that I had had that mm -hmm. um, as a, a vet coming mm -hmm. up through GP in a practice that saw exotics mm -hmm. and I didn't want anything to do mm -hmm. with them. And I was like mm -hmm. freaked out that a, yeah, I know, can see that. No, that I a can turtle see that. was going to come yeah. in after hours or something while I was the only yeah. one on. But um, I, I just, I wanted you to come on to be you. Mm -hmm. And your, I think you, <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> Mike even took up the, <laughs> the yes. deck. You <laughs> definitely <laughs> talked to Lila today. Yeah. You definitely talked to Lila, I, not yes. Dr. Prince. And Lila is a very lovely person with a lot to give, and I really, thank really, you. I'm very grateful to. That likewise, we met. likewise. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Aha. I hope you liked yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, all of you, for watching and listening. Um, I, you know how I feel about stories, and Lila has yes. some pretty good ones. Yeah. So I um, hope you enjoyed this treat, and we'll catch you next time on Central Line. Thank you. <laughs>